Okay, uh, welcome to episode five. Now, on in this video, we're not really going to code a lot. Um, in fact, I don't think we're going to code at all. Um, this is mostly like a frequently asked question sort of, um, you know, session. Um, we often get requests that, um, hey, I have a Frappe backend that is hosted on a different URL and my React app is hosted on a different URL. How do I handle authentication then? How do I use Frappe React SDK? Can I use Frappe React SDK? And um, I'm here to answer all of those questions. So first, how do you use tokens in Frappe React SDK? Now, what I mean by that is if you go to Frappe Framework, you'll see that uh, Frappe does have a way of handling authentication in its REST API. Um, let me go to REST API and see in authentication, they have three different ways of authenticating the user, right? One is token-based authentication, wherein you can get an API key and secret, and um, you can generate these for every user uh, by going into the user. Uh, let me just show that to you once. So if you go into a user, you can go to settings, API access, and then you can generate these keys and you'll get an API secret as well as an API key. You can use that. Um, and so every request that you send needs to have that API key and secret. The other way is password based authentication, which we covered in the previous video. This is what we use. The, the main reason why, uh, you know, why our app can support password based authentication is because it's being run on the same domain. And because it's being run on the same domain, that means that the cookies are persisted, right? Um, and what, what that, what that basically means is that if you go to, if, if you call this API, it will try to set cookies in your browser. Now those cookies, uh, they have a same site, uh, criteria to them. And I think the same side is strict. So what that means is that let's say if your Frappe backend is hosted on example1.com and your front end is being run on example2.com, the cookies won't be set because the, the site is different, right? Every time the request goes in, it goes unauthenticated without those cookies. In our case, it runs on the same domain. So this doesn't matter. Um, and the third is access token based. This is when we use OAuth and we want to set up, um, you know, um, let's say someone did a login with Google and you have that OAuth token now, you can pass that in um, with each and every request. So what's clear over here though, is unless you're using password based authentication, both those methods, token based and OAuth uh, or bearer token based, both of them, essentially require you to send those tokens with every request. So if you want to get a list of documents, you need to send the token in the authorization header. In password based authentication, the cookie is being set. So uh, you can see how password based authentication works. If you look at, let's, let's make a fetch call. Yeah, you'll see in the headers, See, all of these cookies are being sent, right? With the, with the user ID and everything else, uh, not those, sorry, this, this is your request header and all of these cookies that are set for this application, those are being sent. Uh, you can look at all of the cookies that are available here. Now, uh, let's go on to answer this question. How do you use tokens in Frappe React SDK? So, if I go to my code editor in my Frappe provider, what I can do is that I can pass in something called as token params. Token params is an object and it has these type use token and a token. So type can be either bearer or a token, depending on which one you use, right? If you use the first one, it would be token. In this case, your token would be a combination of API key colon secret. Um, the bearer would be when you use OAuth, that's when you, you would, that, that's when you would use the bearer and it would just be a, a simple token. Now let's say if I have token, I can do, and then I need to pass use token as true. 
What this would do is that every request that Frappe React SDK makes, it passes in the tokens in the authorization header. Then my token is basically a function. You see, the main reason why it's a function is because your tokens might change. So uh, you cannot set a string value directly. I mean, if you have a constant token, you can just pass in your function and say my token. If you have an API key or secret, this would be API key colon API secret, right? Something like that. Uh, but more often than not, you usually store your token in like index DB or in your local storage. And so you want to fetch the latest token. And so you just need to pass it the function and return a string, right? So this is how you use token params. Uh, you pass it the type of token, you set use token to true and you pass it the token function, a function that returns a string for the token. Every request now will get this. So if I, uh, I don't know if this is running, it should be running. So yeah, see, uh, it says invalid login credentials, that's fine. But what you'll see is, oh, okay, this is a login request. So this won't really have uh, the tokens, but but yeah, but I mean, it works, right? Because I've used it, it works. It won't work on the login because you don't re really need to log in anymore, right? Uh, so it won't work there, but for every other request, like get list, get doc, whatever, it would work. Um, so let's, uh, for reference again, you can look at this. Yeah, token params, token, use token, and the token is a, uh, a function that returns your token. Okay. Next, we look at how to use OAuth based tokens. Again, same, right? But in your type token, this would just become bearer. And your token will be your my OAuth bearer token, whatever it is, right? Uh, yeah, so this is how you, you, how you would use it for OAuth. Um, next, how to use a custom auth provider like Firebase, Auth0, Octa maybe, I'm not sure. Um, so I have worked with Firebase before, wherein our front end was being served on a different URL, our back end was on a different URL. And uh, we were using Firebase authentication on the front end, right? And so obviously our back end had to use Firebase as well. How did we handle that? So, uh, well, first things first, we need to ensure that our back end can actually understand Firebase authentication right for that you need to install firebase admin on your backend and there is a hook auth hooks right you can use auth hooks and uh, you can name a particular function which would handle which would validate your token um, so this is basically like let's say if um, what what firebase would do is that it would give you an id token um, and this ID token, and I think other auth providers would do the same. This ID token that needs to be checked whether the user is a valid user or not. And then you need to sort of resolve the user ID from it, right? So you need to pass in that function and that function would look something like this, right? Wherein you, you need to install Firebase admin Python SDK um, on your Frappe app then you would import credentials from Firebase admin. And this is your function, validate Firebase ID token, right? What it does is that it takes in the authorization header and if the authorization header's length is two, which is, um, uh, you know, you would, you would basically get, you would try to get the token from it. This would be a bearer token. Um, and then what, what we did for that uh, was we set the Firebase settings in a separate single doc type. It had uh, the configurations like the app name, um, you know, and there's a bunch of like JSON based configurations, etc. You also need to get um, credentials, right? And certificates, you need to store those on your site. Um, we did that and this is basically that, right? It fetches the Firebase settings, the credentials path, gets the credentials, initializes the Firebase admin app, 
right? And then it essentially calls verify ID token and passes in the token. I mean, you would do something like this for other providers as well, for Firebase as well, for, for Firebase as well as for, let's say, Auth0 or something like that. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, and then let's look at this. Does Socket work with token-based authentication? The last time I checked, it does not. Socket, uh, and this is not with Frappe React SDK, this is not an issue with Frappe React SDK. Uh, it's an issue with, with the Frappe framework itself. I, I mean, I don't know if that's a, that has been fixed since then, but last time I checked, if you are using token-based authentication, Socket.io events do not work because Socket.io uses cookies to authenticate the user. Now, having said that, what would happen is that if you use token-based authentication, uh, this would continuously throw an error, right? Uh, because it would say, I cannot connect to socket, I cannot connect to socket. It, in your console, it will just be filled with errors. So you need to disable socket. For that, we have a, a variable called enable socket. By default, it's true. Just set it to false, and then you won't uh, have socket um, problems uh, on your front end, right? So, yeah, and then how to pass a different URL for Frappe backend. Now, we need to unpack this. So, what happens sometimes um, is that you might have your Frappe backend on, let's say, backend.example.com. Your frontend might be on frontend.example.com. Um, in that case, your uh, cookie based authentication won't work. You have to use token based authentication. We've already discussed that. But how do you tell Frappe React SDK that I need to make requests not on whatever is the current domain slash API slash method or you know whatever, right? I need to make a request to uh, to a different URL. Very simple. All you can do is you can pass a URL. There is a URL field, and you can pass it whatever. This could be an environment variable. This could be you know a, a hard coded. Um, URL, you can just pass it a string and every request now will use this. So I'll show this as an example here. Uh, where is my React tab? Yeah, you'll see that it's now failed to load resource and it's throwing that error. Even if I click on login, see, it cannot, it cannot handle it because it's now redirecting all requests to localhost 8000, which is not my, uh, you know, domain, but so yeah, you can pass in a custom URL like this. Now, after you've passed it a custom URL, you this this might not solve all of your problems because your server, your server which is running on let's say backend.example.com is not uh, geared to take in requests from uh, from a separate URL, right? From a different URL. Uh, because that would throw a cause error. So the way to get around that is in your site config, you need to add your front end as well as your back end URLs in your site config for allow cores, allow underscore cores. So uh, you'll see that on our local machines, we did that. Uh, let's see. So if I go to my common site config, and uh, by the way, this would be something that is specific to a particular site. So you would set that in your site config and not your common site config. But I'll just show what we had done for allow cores. Allow cores over here was a star, which basically means that it accepts requests from anywhere. We shouldn't do that on production environments, but in, in such a case, what you would do is you would um, have an array of strings. The first would, the first string, I mean, Basically, you need to have those two URLs, right? Backend.example.com and frontend.example.com in allow calls, and then it would work. Uh, I hope that makes it clear. Um, and yeah, I think that's all we had to cover for this video. Um, in the next video, uh, what we'll do is we'll start with our, um, you know, our standard Frappe React hooks. But uh, what we've realized is. Uh, without uh, a bunch of basic components already there, it would be very difficult and time consuming to make those uh, screens. So I'll be populating the components folder in the directory over here. Uh, components folder, I'll just populate it with a lot of components that we already have. You can copy over that entire components folder into your local projects as well, if you're following along. 
So yeah, uh, I hope that answers all of your questions. And if you have more questions, please reach out to us via the comments below. Great. Thanks. Bye.